Making a tree a little bit to piss people off, and that's yeah. how they stay relevant. Hard truth is, you know, hey, you said I'd never be great, but I'm waiting for you to catch me. Let's go! I mean, if you want me to step down to classic, I'll do that. Hold on, hold on, time out, man. Alex Allen, What's going on? It's your boy Train with the Backfield Podcast. And I am not here with the captain today. The captain is celebrating his grandmother's 80th birthday, which is great. Happy birthday, Grandma. That being said, y'all know what we're here to do. We're here to inspire, motivate, and give you the real. So before we do anything, make sure you go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, all of those. Show your support. So although Captain ain't here, um, we did get somebody to fill the captain's seat. The captain can never be replaced, but this guy right here, I'm thinking y'all gonna enjoy this. Without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about this guy. Born and raised in Northeast Ohio, Cleveland to be exact. He started his amateur career on May 10th, 2014 at the MPC Mike Francois Classic, where he finished first place in novice division, first place in the middleweight division, and he was the overall winner. For some of y'all to understand, we'll get into what that overall means. Um, 78 days later, his amateur career was over. Uh, July 26, 2014, he finished first place in the middleweight division, and he earned his pro card at the MPC USA Championships in Las Vegas, Nevada. This guy, IFBB Pro, the phenom, Brian Balzano. Welcome, my guy. What is going on, man? Oops, sorry about that. No, nah, don't be it sorry, man. It's a pleasure man. to be on this podcast Shoulders today. just popping all over the <laughs> mic and everything. So thank you for being here, bro. Uh, it's been a long time coming. You know, it was, we was having to run around a little bit, but we finally got you here at the backfield. So my first question is 78 days. Yeah. Is that still the shortest amateur career? So as far as I know, it is. Now, some people have done it shorter in a shorter frame, but they competed in other in other like mm -hmm. leagues and stuff. So like I remember like people online were like talking to my coach and they were like, you know, well, someone went pro in like 10 days. But they were like, yeah, but he competed in another um, league for 10 years. So uh. from the very first show that you've ever done to turning pro. I'm pretty sure that record's still mine at 78 days. 78 days is ridiculous. You know, myself, you know, I'm, I'm an IFBB pro. Um, I have not done a pro show yet, but I think I could have caught that record, but John shut me down. <laughs> 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 I, I did the um, the one up in Cleveland. What's it got? Dave Lieberman yeah, show. Dave Lieberman. The natural there uh, where I got first place and I was qualified to go um, to nationals, is it? Yeah. Nationals. And then... Five weeks later with Mark Knight, who's also IFBB pro. I did love you, bro. Yeah, I love my dog. I love my ball, my, my dog. Um, and then I did the Pittsburgh Pro with him as he did his uh, first pro show, his debut. And I took first place in at the NPC level. And then my coach was like, hey, let's just shut it down. And me not knowing a sport, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll shut it down then. You know, but yeah. as a competitor, had I known <laughs> that, I'm like, nah, let, let me go for it. Let me go for Gotta it. Got to get that. But, you know, all records are meant to be broken, but I think it's rightfully so that you have it. And I've seen the work that you put in, and um, we got a chance to talk. I think I met you in 20, 2020, maybe? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Somewhere around there. It's been about three years, yeah. About three years. So, um, but yeah, now here you are in the flesh. So, l let me ask you this. Are you, growing up, were you into sports? So, I was. I was not good at them, but I was into <laughs> all sports, but baseball was okay. my passion and my like my favorite. I wanted to be a professional baseball player since a little kid. Um, Derek Jeter was Jeter. my icon. Um, still is. Like out of everyone there is, he's always been the person I looked up to. But I just was not good. I had a little accident as a kid. Me and uh, my friends were playing baseball at some of the fields up in Cleveland. We were, uh, I was pitching, and one of the kids hit the ball back. I never saw it. Mm. And it smacked me right in the, the face. I thought my whole jaw shattered. I actually have a root canal on my one tooth. That's Sheesh. it. And since ever since that moment, I was pretty much like scared. 
of the ball. Every time I tried to hit, I just saw the vision of the ball smacking my face. So that pretty much ruined my dream of like going harder in okay. baseball. But yeah, but I never really thought about bodybuilding until I got to maybe 19 years old. Okay. So yeah. So I, so before we get into that, what about football? Did you do you follow it at least? Do you have like a favorite team, favorite sports teams? Yeah. So when I was young, followed all sports. Don't anymore. Okay. Uh, when bodybuilding took over, it just I had no TV. It, it just uh, all consuming. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It just went to college, studying, lifting, eating, sleeping. I didn't have time to pay attention. I was only focused on schoolwork and lifting. That's a full time job. Yeah, I did. So, so talking about lifting, when did you actually get into lifting? So I got into lifting end of junior year of high school, right at the start of senior year. Okay. And that's crazy because that's when I really got into lifting. What yeah. was your motivation? My motivation, obviously, was sports. Um, captain, you know, he yeah. had already um, had offers and everything. And I remember Ron Zook, who was the head coach at Illinois at the time, he came to talk to a few of the athletes. And um, Captain was already, you know, committed to where he was going. So he's, yeah. I'm a clown. He's a clown. He runs <laughs> down. He looks at me. I'm talking to Ron Zook, and he makes me laugh. Zook kind of looks at me, and he told my head coach, he's like, I don't know, man, this guy seems like he's immature. And I'm like, man, that was just... Like, damn, Cap, you, you done messed me up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cracking jokes. But uh, nonetheless, that's what got me focused. When I said, you know what? I have an opportunity to um, help my parents, you know what I mean? Not yeah. have to pay for college. And so I started taking lifting a little bit more serious and uh, getting bigger, faster, and stronger. And that was my why. And you said, you know, you like sports, but you didn't really continue to play them. So what was your why that you wanted to get into it your junior year? So it's uh, actually pretty basic. So all those memes you see, like a breakup makes bodybuilders. Oh, that, that was come it. on, man. <laughs> My uh, so small side story. I graduated high school at 104 pounds. So I don't know if you can find, you know, like your little sister or something that weighs 104 pounds. So I and like muscle weighs more than fat. So right. a man weighing 104 pounds is more like a skeleton than a female at five four. So you can only imagine how tiny I was. So when my first girlfriend decided to leave me and all stuff. I was like, dude, I'm never going to get a girlfriend again. I'm just a bag of bones. Now mm. her, her older brother was jacked, massive, got every girl he wanted. And then her older sister dated this boxer who was shredded and every girl wanted him. So in my eyes, I was like, you know, if I'm ever going to be wanted by the other, right, right. you know, I was like, I need to do something for myself because right now this ain't cutting it. And so that is what motivated me to be like, you know what? I need, to improve myself. Right. So that's what initially started the fire. And then when I went, started going to the gym, started seeing changes, started already at that point, seeing big improvements in my physique. That's when I noticed I had some type of gift. Then it switched from like, you know, one thing, I don't need a girl for anything. I just like doing this. Right. And then from that moment on, it just, it just consumed me. I just became deeper and deeper in love with it. I loved what it was doing to me. I loved the passion and just, Give me something to do. Like as a man, you need something to just drive towards. Absolutely. I and that's what gave me that. hard purpose. So when you got into lifting, again, it was for the better yourself. And so the females can look at you. Yeah, right? that's what. It, <laughs> so <laughs> once you got consumed in it, bodybuilding wasn't always the goal. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. It wasn't. At what point did you say, you know what? I heard you say I had a, I have a gift, but at what point did you say, you know what, I want to give bodybuilding a try? So uh, it actually was not my my call. I right. just love doing my thing, and everywhere I went, I was harassed in a positive manner. Everyone was like, "Why don't you compete?" And I'm like, Dude, I had no idea what the IFBB was, mm -hmm. the NPC stage shots. I didn't really know any of the Bibler's names. I just knew when I walked in the GNC, I'd see Jay Cutler. He was my like inspiration. That's the body mm. I wanted. I didn't really know who he was or anything about bodybuilding, but so it all started in college. Uh, I went to Ohio University. Boo! <laughs> and uh, as you all know out there, one of the largest party, party schools, schools in the world. Now, as just to throw it out there, I only drank four days my whole college career. Your whole college so, career, yeah, you only drank four times. Four times, yeah. And you can ask my friends. Everyone's like, how did you go to Athens, Ohio? And I'm like, just once again, the mindset. Mindset. I had some friends there, but like, I didn't really want to ever be normal. So 
I went there with a purpose. I need a degree because, you know, my family, I don't come from much. My come family on, has nothing. They're not going to pass anything on. So, like, this is my money. I'm paying for this. There's no scholarships. There's no inheritance. There's nothing. So mm -hmm. why would I waste my time to throw away my money, my education, my way to better my life? Right. So, and then also on my side job, hey, I, at this point, lifting was me. So I kept going. So that is how I forgot like, what was the original question again? Or no, just it was that your goal wasn't bodybuilding at the point. Oh, yeah. So then, no. And then ever I went, so from college, I met someone named Jamin, who's who I met my coach. He was a bodybuilder. And it was me and two other people there in the gym, like, every Friday night. Like, everyone else was out there, and we were passionate about lifting. Mm -hmm. So we were there, and he was the first one. He was like, dude, like, why don't you get on stage? And I'm like, man, I got to get a degree first. I got to get a job. Yeah. Like, I can't be just like, because in my head, you can't make money from lifting weights. You can't do any of that. So I'm like, just, I don't got time for this. I got to do what I'm supposed to do as a, as a person, as a man. Right. Make a career. And so then came here, got hired by Chase out of college, moved to Columbus, then went to Metro Fitness in Worthington, mm -hmm. Mike Davies Gym, and everyone there. And Davies himself was like, why aren't you competing? And after a while, you know, he's like, you got your job. You got a career. Like, what are you waiting for? And then he just and what, walked up What to year me. was this? 2013 or 14? This was 13. 13. Okay. So a year before yeah. you stepped on stage. And so that was it. And it's everywhere I went, I would just get stopped and be like, why aren't you competing? And Davies was the first one to kind of talk me into it because I was already like dieting hard. And he just came up to me and was like, bro, he's like, I'm not even asking you to change your life. He's like, you're already lean. You're already dieting. You're, you're already like doing all the stuff that people I have to convince to do. You're already doing this. He's like, you can really step on stage in like two weeks. Yeah. He's like, just, just throw on some underwear and get on stage. I'm yeah. telling you, if you want a different life than to live in the real world, the nine to five, he's like, you have an actual shot. So I was like, why don't you? He's like, there's a show coming up next year, early May. I think you should do it. It's right here called the Mike Francois Classic. And I was like, mm -hmm. all right. You know, so I was like, let's, let's give it a try. So did you know who Mike Francois was before you did his show? No, I, I did not. Monster. Yeah, dude, he, one of the best bodybuilders ever. Yeah. And arguably say, like, you know, he beat Dorian Yates early on in his career. Mm -hmm. So, like, he could have been Dorian Yates. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that. So, um, even though, you know, he had his help, you know, his health right, problems. Right. But uh, in my eyes, arguably one of the best, if not the best bodybuilder ever step on stage. Yeah. Okay. So, after finding all that out, I'm like, wow, like, yeah. this guy's right here with us. So Mike Davies tells you that you should do the Mike Francois Classic. Yeah. In 2013, when did you say, okay? So around that time, I just tried to find a coach. Okay. And uh, once again, just like, you know, Davies with Jim, but like we never really talked mm -hmm. and all stuff. And I just kind of wanted, like, it's not that I had like nothing against him. I just very like when you trust only a few people for sure. And Davies so got a lot going on. Too. Yeah. And that's like, once again, like you want more attention. Absolutely. And so like, he has a tremendous amount of clients. So Jamin, the person I talked to in college, he was someone I trusted because he worked hard. He didn't have the best shape. Okay. Amazing genetics diced probably more than me. Dude was an insane bodybuilder, but he just did not have the correct genetic shape. Mm -hmm. And so I still think he's a pro, even though he never went pro. I trust him. I looked back to him. I hit him up. I'm like, bro, I think I'm going to finally do my show. And he was like, dude, finally. And I'm like, just one thing is I don't know who to get, get as a coach. And I trust you because right. we spent our whole college career together every Friday night, not going out. Me and him were similar. And so he was like, hey, my coach is Justin Compton. Let me hook you up. And that's how I got my coach. I just, I trusted my faith in him mm -hmm. to lead me in the right direction. That name sounds familiar. Is he, is he local to where you live? So he's originally from Kentucky. Okay. So not too local, but it was a three-hour drive. But he now lives in South Florida. Okay. So would he, without getting into too much, is he still your coach without getting into too much? Yes. Okay. He is the first and only coach I've ever had. Okay, great. Great way to answer that without, you know, yeah. getting into too much. So, boom, you step on stage, um, the Mike Francois Classic. But before I go to there, you start to learn a little bit more about bodybuilding as you're going to approach your first show. Yeah. You said you looked up to Jay Cutler. You saw him. Uh, that's the shape that you wanted. But what was the mindset behind wanting that shape? Is that just something that you wanted to achieve or did you want to blow that shit out the water? 
Uh, I'd probably say more to achieve because okay. I, I knew in my head, like, there's not much more that you can get from that. Now, other specific details like my glutes okay. lost off. I, you know, I pretty much blow everyone out the water yeah, in that yeah. wise. But I strive for that because, like, the human body's limits can only go so far. But I mm-hmm. knew, like, these guys right now are already pushing the absolute limits that humanity can get from a physique standpoint. Right. So, but in my head, I'm like, you know, now I'm never going to be 300 pounds. But yeah, I strive to hit him. That was it. Because I knew you, you can't surpass it. I'm never going to be 300 pounds. I'm 5'4". I think Jay Cutler's like 5'9". So I'll never have that mass mass. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just strive to hit Jay Cutler. And then in time, you know, once again, I don't like to just, I don't like when I do things, I don't really like to set goals. I just do things. Let the boat sail. Just I'm driving the car, but there's no destination. I'm just going to get to wherever I'm meant to be. So it's interesting. You, you you say you don't set goals. Is that in life or just in bodybuilding? I feel like in life because I don't like, I'm a very like, the more I know, the more it can destroy the mind. So like the less thinking, the less stress, less everything. So I'm that person in a way, like that's why I could never be my own coach. Like I'm the worst person to coach myself. Mm-hmm. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm so critical As you that should be. so many details will then destroy my mindset. Right. Whereas the less I have to worry about, I just got to focus on the food I got to eat, the times I got to eat, and the training I got to do, I can coast. So that's kind of like, it's unorthodox, but yeah, I don't really set goals. I'm just like, in my mind, I know where I want to go. But the more I focus on that, the more I feel like I focus way too much. Right. And then it's just going to derail you. And we're like, that that balance of life, like that quality of life will start mm-hmm. to, you know, go down. Whereas the less I know where I'm going, but the less I think about it and just focus on the little things, Mm -hmm. the big thing will always come. Interesting, man. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a firm believer in if you don't make a plan, you ain't got a plan. You're making a plan to lose. Yeah. And so me personally, this is why the human body and the human mind is, is so great because people can do different things. Everything is not for everybody. Yeah. Me, I set a goal. I'm self-motivated. Um, I find something that I can, you know, be less than per se. Yeah. Just so I can go and be better than it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm always in competition with myself. So that thing that's less than or better than might be myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. I might look in the mirror and like you say, man, it, I'm too critical of myself. I'm I tell myself, bro, you look like trash. Figure <laughs> it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's just interesting to hear you say that because you've had so much success in bodybuilding. And even more is going to come in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just interesting to hear you say that. Like the best way I can explain it is like you want to be a millionaire. But what if your potential, you can be a billionaire? Yeah. Let's say like, so like when people hit goals, they tend to like, now I'm saying you need to have goals. Yeah. Which is once again, the drive. Like, mm-hmm. and so I feel like when you have like, oh, like I want to be a millionaire there, like you start to slow back. Mm-hmm. Whereas if there's no goal, like I just want to be great. But in the back of my mind, I guess the end goal was like, I knew I could be like, can be one of the greatest at what I do. So like the goal in my mind is like, I want to go down as one of the best 212 Biblers ever, like uh, one of the best 200 pound Biblers on the planet ever. Mm. And so, but like, I wouldn't really. So you had it. it. Yeah. So I I had it, but I never really talked about it because it, to me, it would just get me off track. The more like it gave me more anxiety. Whereas if I'm like in my head, I knew I had greatness. Come on. I won't talk about it, but like I let my, action speak so like in the gym so like even for you like i feel like with both of us you can speak it or not speak it but in general it's the work ethic so like when you go to the gym you saw me training like i'm, I'm there for three hours i'm beating my body every day mm-hmm. to a level that like i'm trying to be the not the one percent the one <clears throat> don't come on man i'm already self-motivated bro you ain't gotta <laughs> so you ain't gotta do it more i guess we are self-motivated but in just a different way yeah but yeah but i don't like the focus on it because I feel like the more you just kind of focus too much on the goal, you, your work, because like once again, like we work hard. That's how I Absolutely. first met you in the gym. Like mm-hmm. uh, back from the intro, like when I first saw this man, like I thought he was a pro. <laughs> I was kidding, like, he, he's like, what's that? I'm like, yeah. what? Like, I'm like, dudes, that's why I'm like, he could have very much easily beat my record. Yeah. No. I honestly feel that because yeah, I was impressed. I'm like, bro, like, why haven't you? Yeah. You have an amazing physique. Yeah. The genetics are off the chart. And sure enough, you did, dude, and you I you did. spanked it. Yeah, and, and you know, it's crazy you say that because 
just like your story, um, we knew my reason why I started the workout, but it was an outlet for me. Uh, when I was young, man, I was more or less a hothead. I would, I, I would fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then when you start hitting the gym, you ain't got energy to fight, man. <laughs> you learn how to talk to people, you know? Yeah. And just like, you know what? I'm cool, you know? And then if I fight, guess what? I miss a chance of, you know, going to college and helping my parents out. No, it's yeah. really, you don't want to let your parents down. But same like you said, and um, this is your show, but I agree. It was the same thing. Or do you compete? I lived in Colorado. Do you compete? Compete what? Yeah, I still play football. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I've been an athlete my whole life, so I'm always competing. What you want to compete in? Want to play spades? You know, I had no yeah. idea what the bodybuilding world was like, you know? It's like, oh, man, you can definitely do classic physique or men's physique. I'm like, I don't know what that is. And they seriously thought I was just trolling, you yeah. know? So I definitely get that. Um, but I know when I saw you, I said, bro, look, like, Mark, who is it? Why he, you know what I'm saying? Like, why his legs so big? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, man, hey, hey, that dude right there. And he talked you up so much um, in a way, like you said, you don't have to talk about yourself. No, Let yeah. everybody else do it for you. And here, you already know what you're capable of doing. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, yeah, I'm going to do me. And people could sometimes can misconstrue that as, oh, he's arrogant. He doesn't talk. He No, it's called focus. Yeah. I'm um, focused. I got that goal in mind, and I will do whatever it takes to get it. Absolutely. And I don't got to speak about it, but you damn sure know. Oh, you going to know. I might be silent, but when I walk in that room, everyone in there knows I'm there to accomplish something. Absolutely. I see you at the gym, and I'm in there too. It's simple. It's a nod. We walk by. That's it, and we keep working. Yeah. Now, if I catch you at the end of the workout, we'll chat up a little bit. We know it's work time. Yeah. I know what you're there to do, and I know what I'm there to do. So that was always love and appreciated because some people don't understand gym etiquette, man. When you got oh, yeah. the big old headphones in or if you got your little <laughs> ear pods in, that person don't want to talk. They're there to yeah. work, you know? So either get to work or leave me alone until I'm done, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So tell me about the first experience of that show and, and, and how it went and what did you expect from it? So the my first show the first or the show? The, the first, first show. show. So, man, I was scared out of my mind. Uh -huh. So I do not like... Um, the, like, crowds? The, the crowds, the public speaking. Like I also like when I was younger, I had a very, very bad speech impediment. I would stutter so hard. So when I get real nervous, you can hit like it does kind of come out a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, man, I was like there in headlights. Heart was racing. I honestly I remember like I talked to my coach. I was like, I remember I texted him backstage. And I mean, like looking back, everyone was like, dude, like you won the show before you even threw a pose. Like, I mean, and I. I rightfully did because when I won the show, they pushed me when they first called everyone out, they pushed me off. Mm. They put me on the end because I already won. They were, they said that I was a distraction. Cause when I came out, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, aren't I supposed to be in the middle? Right. Like, why am I in last place? I was mm. so confused. And then when I won, I'm like, what happened? Judge was like, dude, you were so good that we couldn't judge everyone else. We had to get you off. Like wow. we just kind of look at you. So, but like the funny thing, and this is where the level of a real champion comes in. Backstage, I texted my coach. And I said, I don't deserve to be here. I didn't work hard enough. Mm. I don't think I look good enough. I, I, I looked around. And he was like, are you serious? I'm like, he's like, Brian, say that. I'm like, no. I'm like, I, I felt like I could have pushed harder like the last couple of weeks. I'm like, I don't think I look good enough. This isn't my best. And if it's not my best, I don't want to get on stage. And he was just like, dude, he's like, whoa. He's like, no, you're getting on that stage. Mm. And I want, but I didn't think I was going to win because in my own mind, I'm like, you know what? Replaying those videos back in my head i could have trained harder absolutely i could have done one more rep and i'm like and since i know i maybe went 99 percent and not 100 percent on some of those days i'm like i just i don't deserve to be on the stage right now mm. and then i blew it out the water but in the moment i was so so scared man it was just like the, the nerves all these people all the lights i'm just like uh what do i do like why are yeah. you all staring at me can you turn around uh, you know <laughs> that's you know and i think this uh this is good because we can kind of compare. We're around the same age. We can kind of yeah. compare our, our life and then, you know, our bodybuilding life. Um, when I first got on stage, mine was opposite. I was, when I was going into the show, I'm like, man, I don't I don't know if I worked hard enough, man. And this is before I seen anybody. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I worked hard enough. I don't know if I got what it take. Man, I don't know if these guys are just gassing me up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but once I got to the venue... Uh, still without seeing anyone. I'm like, it's here now. I didn't commit it to it. I posed. Let me just go out there and act like I own it. 
Let me act like I know what I'm doing. You know, because on a football field, if you make a mistake, you make it full speed. And sometimes it can overcompensate that full speed. Like, oh, he didn't make a mistake. And that was my mindset. Although there's nothing I can do on stage athletically to, to set me apart from anybody, it's like, I'm here now. I got to outpose you. You know yeah. what I mean? And I knew crap about posing. But <laughs> once I got there and I'm like, okay, this is a natural show. Some of these guys may be their first time doing it. I'm like, man, what I got to lose? Bro, I work my tail off. Maybe not hard enough, but now I'm looking. I'm like, all right, now you're starting. I remember Mark saying, he said, bro, when you go backstage, you know how Mark talked, bro, when you go backstage, <laughs> you're going to see these guys and they're going to be already defeated. He was like, now if you see somebody that look good, that don't mean you lost. Just go out there and do what you're supposed to do. I'm yeah. like, I got you, bro. I said, I promise you, I got you. I remember Chief, um, you know, at, at the gym. Yeah. She was, you know, I was doing my posing, but I was kind of like walking through it. She was like, you, you, if you're going to pose, you got to make sure you do it fully. And I'm like, I got you, ma'am. I said, trust me, when I hit the lights, something different is just going to change. Because when I played football, I practiced my ass off. I worked hard. But you can't, you can practice full speed, but it's nothing like in a game. It's different because you got flying bullets coming at you. Yeah. And now your talent really has to show. So when you get on that stage, you got flying bullets, and those bullets are the judge's eyes and everybody else's eyes, and they're ooh and ah because the judges, believe it or not, are influenced by that. You know yeah. what I mean? So when I got out there, um, number 17, Alex Allen. I walked out there, and I took a deep breath, and I went through my simple posing routine, and then they did the call-outs and whatnot and, you know, prejudging. And I was just smiling. I had my gold teeth in. They were like, don't wear your gold teeth. I said, I am who I am. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm out there smiling and and posing. And, and it was it was trash. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> you know, my first time, it was trash. But um, I ended up winning, you know. And so for you, like, man, I was so nervous. Me, I was just, it wasn't that I was overconfident. I was comfortable in where I was, knowing yeah. that it's here now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just interesting to just to kind of compare those stories. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go ahead, continue. So you done that? You won uh, first place novice. Yep. Um, first place in in uh, middle middleweight. Yeah, middleweight. Middleweight, and then the overall. So for those who don't know what overall is, please explain it to them. So the uh, I think there's seven classes. I don't mm -hmm. know all the the batnam lightweight all that, and so the winner of every class goes up at the end for the overall win. So it's not supposed to be based on size. It's supposed to be based on the overall just package you bring, shape, size, conditioning, hardness, condition. Um, so all that combined, the person that has the best overall look wins the, the whole show. And normally speaking in bodybuilding, it's always the bigger guys because it's a muscular sport. It's right. going to be muscle. And so you really don't see the smaller guys win. Mm -hmm. So when I won middleweight as the overall title, that was like, I wasn't expecting that. I just kind of went in there and, um, yeah, I, I won. And it was like at, at that moment, like I remember like just the amount of just adrenaline mm -hmm. running through. Cause I had all my friends there who, who surprised me. Mm -hmm. They all said mm -hmm. that they had, uh, my best friend, Angelo, um, his birthday is right around. It was like two days before the show. And they were like, Hey man, we can't come. His mom throwing a, kind of like a big surprise, like party. And dude, these guys showed up to the show in American flag shorts, huge like signs, like it's a WWE cage match. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, and they're, they're screaming. I remember like, and that's where I was like, I had no clue. Like, I remember I go up to walk out at, at pre judging, and they're like front row center signs, like balls over here, right here. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, if I was nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> so did it make you more nervous? Yeah, and I was like, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, Angelo, you ain't you. <laughs> what, what camera are you on? Angelo, you ain't you ain't right for that, man. You know how my man is. But hey, he appreciate. I know he appreciates you showing up, though, Angelo. But that wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh. But hey, it all worked out. Awesome surprise. So yeah, but uh, after I won, man, it was a uh, an incredible feeling because it was yeah. like everything that like I didn't know a, know a thing about bodybuilding, but like in my head, everyone's like, you have this gift, and I'm like, but everyone's so much bigger than me. Yeah. And see, that's where, like, I didn't understand at first. Like, Davey's like, bro, like, it's not about muscle. Like, and then as you learn, he's like, you have an amazing body. And I'm mm -hmm. like, but, like, I'm half the size of everybody. Like, how am I better when isn't this about muscle and I have less than muscle? And so over time, I learned why mm -hmm. I won. But at first, I was confused. I'm like, all right. Like, I just blew everything away. I guess what, what everyone was saying was right. Right. And I'm like, so, all right, let's, let's keep going. So speaking of that, you said over time. 
So yeah. over 78 days, you decided to go to Vegas and do the NPC championships. Yeah. USA championships. Let's talk about that experience. Were you still nervous to jump on stage or did you feel a little bit more confident? Uh, I'd probably say actually more nervous. More nervous. Because now, okay. like, this is the United States Championship. Mm -hmm. This is like the best uh, of the best. The Rose Bowl. Or what's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The National this Championship. Is, yeah. mm -hmm. So this is it, man. I'm like, all right, well, this is bigger here, way bigger. And no middleweight has won, like, uh, the overall at USA since I think it was, like, 1976 when it was a four-division so no one, so like I'm going this place, like I'm, and also with just the sports and politics and everything around, like yeah. everyone says, like it normally takes you multiple, like multiple tries to go pro. And I remember, um, I knew a judge, uh, that was in the hometown, and um, she pulled me aside and was like, look, you know, I, I don't want you to get discouraged, but like, you have great potential, but I would not expect to turn pro, yeah, like you got to put times in all stuff. So like you know. The human aspect of sports. There, you know this lady. Yes. Very well. Yes. Okay. Well, I love her too. Then. And, but yeah, don't ever so. put a limit on my. Listen. Don't put a put the camera on me. Don't ever put limits on people. Not talking about her, but in general, never put a limit on somebody because you never know what that person is going through up here that wants them to be the best version of themselves at any given time. So you don't know what that might have did to this guy. That might have motivated him even more. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Like but anyways, side, back to him. Side note, yeah, so, uh, like, we actually talked about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had, we had a little conversation after I went pro, and I'm like, you know, you didn't believe in me. Mm. And she was like, no, I did. I was just trying to be real with you. And I'm like, but you're a judge. And, like, I won that show in world record fashion. I'm like, <sighs> if you would have saw the the gift I had, then you would have fully believed in me. So we, we kind of got into, like, a little argument there and um we don't really talk now uh today's but like i looked at her i was like no i i don't really think you truly believed in me that's wild. and so yeah so i'm 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 with you like mm -hmm. you know sometimes there are anomalies but the percentage she's right the vast i mean i'm the only person who did what i did you don't see that and her thing was like yeah you don't but like i was just trying to be real with you i'm like well being real is i just broke a world record so we got a world record holder man <laughs> We got a world record holder, and and I'm sorry. Let me let me back up for a second, man. And we usually have my boy DC Darnell uh, doing our media production, our production. But today we got we got my boy CC CC. I have my fault, man. <laughs> you're doing such a great job, man. CC back here is is, is handling um, all of our video and audio. So we definitely appreciate you, CC. Sorry for the late shout out, but we do appreciate you. Uh, but back to the uh, you know regular programming. Um, yeah. I, I love when people doubt me, man. Yeah. It's just more fuel to the fire. Yeah, just once again, just gives you like, prove them wrong. Like all the greatest stories, you know, I'm not sure if you guys out there know Nick Walker, like, you know, um, this is being a football podcast, still sports, still no, no, we have the is, same principles. This ain't a football podcast. This uh, is just called the backfield because myself and captain played. Oh, know, running okay, back right, and then yeah. quarterback. But now the backfield for us, you know, so when you think about football, you got the O lineman and behind them, you are protected. So you can go out there and make your adjustments and do what you need to do. So we named it the backfield because now the cameras are our protection and we oh, can come back okay. here and talk about whatever we want to. Now, sports being the adversities that we faced in sports, yeah. we can talk about how we handle adversities now in our lives, because I'm sure there's some adversities that you faced in bodybuilding. And yeah. now when you do something at your job or in life, you're like, man, this ain't nothing compared to what I went through. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just called the backfield for that reason. And but that's this a is, perfect segue to kind of talk about USA's because like ad adversity, like mm -hmm. no one will ever believe in you until you make it. Right. You got to be the only person there. And so like, yes, I had positive harassment leading up to it, but like forever, like I was 104 pounds when I started lifting, I was picked on hard and all the football team, when I was in high school, they kicked me out of the gym. They were like, you know, who, like, just, I was just a little kid. Like, they were, like, very mean. So, just guys out there, don't be that person to bully the people. But as I get into the show at, like, USA's, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm this young kid. I don't have sponsors. I don't have a jumpsuit. All this stuff. I'm not looking pretty. So, I just wore some Walmart pants that were, like, slippery. I wore this Hanes white T-shirt that had stain marks over it from the Mike Francois I just looked like a clown. And um, 
just a side note, I was picked on hard backstage at the show. And um, this one guy in particular, like, he walked up to me as we were getting tanned from prejudging the Was finals. he a competitor? Yes, he was. And okay. it was kind of weird because, you know, we're all getting tanned and, you know, we're all naked. Just kind of like, you know, just stand there getting tanned. And this guy, like, pops out. He's like, hey, man. He's like, uh, are you a Brian Balzano, like, that middle way? Yeah, he's like, dude, I, he's like, I just want to apologize to you. He's like, I was like, why? I'm like, I have no idea who he is. He's like, I know you don't know me, but when you walked backstage at prejudging, we were making fun of you so hard. You looked like a clown and what you're wearing, everything. Like you just looked lost. The minute you dropped your clothes, that whole room went silent. We all knew we lost. Yeah. And he's like, I just want to apologize. Like, he's like, you are an amazing athlete. You have one of the best sticks I've ever seen in my yeah. life. And I want to apologize for personally making fun of you. And I was like, I'm, dude, I, so like, yeah, so backstage, like everyone. So hold on real quick. Y'all backstage naked and this dude coming up talking to you once you drop your, your, your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <laughs> once you dropped your clothes, he wanted to apologize. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I uh, get it though. I get the sport. Well, I'm just making it. Yeah. We got pause. the, while we're backstage, yeah, we're in our, our posing trunks, but right, when you're right. tanned, yeah, you just, yeah, you know, yeah, you, you got to sit there and so he, he just walks over tan. I'm just like. I'm like, just, I'm, this is my first time really getting into all this. Mm -hmm. And just like, I'm like, are men supposed to be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is only your second show. Yeah. A lot of these guys have done multiple shows. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I, just real quick, I'm going back to, I've done three shows, two shows, and then I did nationals. Yeah. Like I said, John had shut me down after the one, uh, the Pittsburgh Pro. And he's like, all right, hey, you got two wins. Let's shut it down. We'll do nationals next year. Um, so when I went to nationals that next year, I'm looking at these guys and I'm like, man, these, these jokers are huge. And like you said, oh, yeah. you're thinking it's a muscle thing. And I was smaller in weight than I was from the first two times that I jump on stage. And I'm like, oh, bro, that, okay, well, I'm here, you know, but you start to realize that these guys don't really have self-confidence. Uh, they can't really pose or they're overly big. And the reason why they don't have self-confidence is because they lost so many times. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like. Starts to beat you up. Yeah, the guy said, man, you got your pro card? I've been chasing this for seven years. I'm like, oh, that's crazy, man. I hope you get it soon. How long yeah. have you been competing? I'm like, it's only my third show. You know what I mean? And Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, like I said, belittle anybody or make them feel some type of way. So I'm like, man, I just kind of got into the sport, man, and this is my third show. But um, just keep pushing. You know what I mean? Still yeah. trying to motivate people. Yeah, you know? of course. So, uh, but anyways, that's your second show. Yeah, second show. I'm in Las Vegas all by myself, and I won. You won that I got day. my pro card, and, dude, it was unreal. I didn't know what to do. I just remember I um, came home. I took a few days off, and mm -hmm. then when I walked in the gym, I remember uh, Mike Davies just stood right in the center and just mm -hmm. had his hands out. No words. He's like, just, he's like dude. Give me a hug. Yep. He's like, what did I tell you? Yep. You had a gift that you didn't see. He's like, now, once again, I didn't have to see it because I didn't really know about it. I just mm -hmm. like going to the gym. I like giving my all every day to be the best I could be. I didn't have that end goal, but like he brought the end goal. Hey, this is what you need to see. Stop going this way. Go this way. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. And so, dude, it was it was wild. But at that point, uh, I felt like expectations on me were so high. Like I just became an overnight sensation. Everyone was like, who is this kid? Like you, you just beat all of America. No one knew who I was. Oh, I had really no social media. They're like, mm -hmm. well, like where'd this person come from? Like, you know, so I didn't really know how to handle all that attention. Mm -hmm. And it started to like, really, so I felt like I had to go more and more. And then I also learned like, you can't just train for four hours. And so I, you know, tore my shoulder and all stuff. So I had to get uh surgery about five months after I went pro. Mm -hmm. And then that started uh, my seven year hiatus for making my you pro know, debut. It's, it's, it, I was just about to go into that. And we talking about the seven years, more six and a half, you know, I did, yeah. I did a little research. <laughs> uh, after 2,478 days was the <laughs> next time you stepped on stage um, on May 8th, 2021. Correct. So let's talk about that, that, six and a half year hiatus from bodybuilding after you turn pro, you learn that you can't train for four hours and you end up tearing your shoulder. Yeah. What else transpired during that time? Uh, a lot, man. So I had to come. So I tore my labrum, had to get surgery and um, started probably at the darkest moment of my whole life. 
Um, it led to I think six different surgeries. Mm-hmm. And so just the shoulder. So the I had the shoulder. Then I had the bicep tendon. So I had a shoulder surgery. Then my bicep tendon had uh was about to pop off the bone. So they now they drilled it there. I had ulnar nerve surgery on my left arm. My arm was going numb. I didn't know why. Ended up finding out the nerve in my left elbow was dead. And they had to re they had to transpose it. They had, they had to move it so it's your funny bone is your ulnar nerve. And now it's on the inside of my arm. Mm-hmm. So the nerve could regenerate. And then I had three tailbone surgeries following that. That which it's a wound surgery. I'm not sure if you guys out there know what a pilonidal cyst is. But that is what I had. I had to get three surgeries. I had to get a um, a general surgeon, a plastic surgeon, and then a reconstructive surgeon. That took 26 months of my life away. That was the worst of it. But it just led to a series of events. And so for six years, I was just dealing with surgeries mm-hmm. and trying to get my body back. Right. But the tailbone stuff was just completely unorthodox. It was just random uh, thing. So no one could have seen it coming. But that... Um, Pushed my mind to the limit. Um, you get a pal, pal, how you say that? It's a, called a pilonidal cyst. Pilonidal cyst. Yeah. On the tailbone. And, yeah. And what is it? So it's a, essentially your body tries to grow a tail. All up. So. Phenom. <laughs> Phenom. <laughs> making becoming, tails. He becoming going, Dragon Ball Z. Bro, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Saying, uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, your body tries to grow assist on the end of the tailbone and it's real painful. And mine became an abscess. It was started, you know, spew blood. It was already infected. Oh, snap. So that's when I went there. Cause like, so like, you know, not to get too into it, but when I would use the bathroom, the toilet would be covered in blood. Yeah. Every time I sat down and I was like, all right, like this is not good. So hit up my coach. I'm like, you know, Hey, is this a problem? He's like, you should probably go see a doctor. Yeah. So I saw my doctor and he's like, yeah, you have a, Ponidal cyst, he's like, you know, it's uh, infected, it's uh, abscessed. I'm like, all right, so what do we do? He's like, we need surgery. And I'm like, surgery? Like, why can't you just, like, clean it? He's like, no, that has to be cut out. Mm. So they cut it out, and then it never healed. So, and that's wow. mainly because of me. So he, he explained in the long term why it never healed. He's like, the fact that you are so dense. So, like, you know, um, you're... He's like, since like I'm known for my glutes. Right, right. So absolutely. like my glutes are very dense, very thick. And he's like, so since your glutes are so compact, dense, he's like, you know, your your butt's very 3D. It comes out, which is not normal. He's like, so you know, like your butt crack is like three inches deep. The wound can't breathe. So oh, wow. what, when a wound can't breathe, it's can't when heal. all of a sudden it's like my butt's not flat. It's three dimensional. It's coming out because mm-hmm. I'm like, because the way my insertions are, he's like, so when you touch your hands together, your hands are going to start sweating. Skin and skin contact. You don't got to press hard, but it's holding it. So it's like, so with your butt cheeks pressed together, it creates moisture. So a wound that is wet can't breathe. And that's one of the, the dirtiest areas of the human body to keep it clean. It was never going to heal. So it just kept getting infected. So over the course of 26 months, I had three surgeries. I have had staph infection 14 times, and I took 16 cycles of antibiotics. I was losing my mind. I was like, so am I just going to like have no immune system? Like I was falling apart. I didn't mm-hmm. see any, I didn't know why this was happening to me. Right. I'm like, I, it just didn't make sense. And it just wouldn't heal. And it's supposed to heal in four to six weeks. And it wasn't. And they were like, the fact that you're so built, I think it's like, Brian, this is a, this, this is a recipe for a disaster. And you gotta be patient. I'm like patient. I've given you two years of my life. Can't lift, can't do anything. Like I couldn't sit. I had so to you stand weren't lifting at this time? No. And your body was still that dense? Yeah. So, well, no, as time went down. But so that's where I was like, so I lost. So I, I lost pretty much everything. So I've been 200 pounds multiple times. But at the end of it all, I was about 140 pounds. Dang. So I went back to, so like that picture on my Instagram where I look like I'm 19 <clears> and I post it and everyone's like, dude, this is not real. This is, this, this is fake. You're lying about dates. I'm like, no, that's what I looked like th- when I start, when I got out, I was looked like a little child, Yeah. but I was. 30 years old. Right. And so I lost everything and then I had to get it back. And that was it. So like my three year transformation going from, you know, 140 pounds to 230, that is 100% real. Oh no, I know. And yeah. So, but it just, yeah, it just, I lost all the weight, but at that point the infection already sat in and he's like, and the last like surgeon who performed the reconstructive surgery was that was just an exploratory surgery. Like he's like, look, I'm going to take this case and I've 
going to cut you open and I just going to go in there and see because he's like, this isn't healing. He's like, what I believe happened is I think the infection is living in your rectum and the wound won't close unless you get uh, the mother nest out. Right. So after the second surgery, <clears throat> after the first one, didn't, because it was too infected, after the second surgery, like eight days post-surgery, the stitches gave out and my butt popped open. Mm -hmm. like you, you could almost touch my tailbone. Wow. And the doctor's like, we can't just go. I'm like, well, when are we doing surgery? Like, well, we can't. We have to wait. Like insurance companies dictate everything. Like you can't, unless you want to pay for it right now. He's like, right. we got to wait six months. I'm like, but I, dude, you can literally cut, like touch my like tailbone. They're like, just, it, it can still heal. So obviously it didn't heal. It, it healed up most of the way. But he's like, when that happened, it must have tore your rectum and the infection went deeper. Mm -hmm. And then it made a home. And so when the reconstruct surgeon went in, he injected his dye. It's like if the dye turns blue, that means, yeah, you have a bacterial infection inside of your rectum. And I have to cut it all out and reconstruct it. Oh, and man. when I woke up, that's what happened. He's like, so at that point, that's why it never healed because they were only treating the symptom. All the surgeons were just cutting the new cyst out, new cyst out, but they yeah. weren't going deep enough to get the actual bacteria out of my body. Wow. So yeah, I, I lost 26 months of my life. Most of my mental health, man, I was a very dark spot. But, like, you know, I never gave up. But, like, I just didn't understand anything that, like, I just broke a world record. I'm in a spotlight. I just made most of my dreams come true. And at that moment, everything was taken from me. Yeah. I had to restart. Like, that's a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. To have everything that you dreamed of and then have it stripped from you. And you have to work back up. You know, God knows when it's going to end. There was no end in sight. But I knew when that moment happened, I have to restart completely. Let me let me ask you this, and then, you know maybe TMI, but I want to know. I'm gonna ask. That's what I do. He said he had to cut you open. Where did he cut you open at? So directly, you know, I'm I'm in my back, and he had the like cut. I'm not something like the butt crack, but like I had a my whole butt crack was sealed with a wound vac. Yeah, all that. So somewhere down there, and he wanted to make sure that this time it wasn't gonna pop open. So mm -hmm. there was internal stitching, liquid stitching. Uh, they put the wound vac on it, everything. And I mean, they even get more in depth. Like I didn't eat food for like the first seven days post-surgery. Yeah. Because anything. I did not want to poop uh, because the, the chance of you going to the bathroom that could rip because yeah. the bowel movement, if it's too thick, but because of pain meds also they were saying like, that, that's how it popped open last time when the stool's too hard and it's coming through and that area is very thin. It mm. bursts it open. So I, I'm like, I starved for like a week. Because I did not want to use the bathroom. And the wound vac, they're like, if you pass seven days, the collagen of the skin should be strong enough right, at right. that point. So my mind was like, all right, man, you're just going to, I want this more than anything. So starve, just lay in bed, do not move, don't do anything. And I, I did. Power. And so I, I got power. through it. But yeah, that was, I was so scared to use the bathroom that I just couldn't do it. You said you were in a very dark place, right? But yeah. sometimes in darkness, we learn a lot about ourselves. Tell me something that, something positive that came from that. What did you learn about yourself? So I learned then that um, stop complaining. Like I, every time, like, you know, I just kept complaining, like, when's it going to end? Like, when's it going to end? I was getting more negative. Mm -hmm. Like the first six months, it was just being real negative because it's like, hey, I, I want my life back. I want this heal. I want this. Sure. Like I was told four to six weeks, so it was like anger. And then after that, that is when I'm just kind of like, you know, no one, like, they're doing what they can, but I'm not helping myself mm -hmm. by being negative and, once again, obsessing over, I need to get back. It will happen, but I was ruining my own day-to-day -day life by just being so negative. So I learned at this point that I needed to just relax, let time take place, do everything in my power to heal. And just, you know, not move, not sweat. Because, you know, being angry and wanting, uh, like, uh, my questions answered, it would just make me more anxious all the time, mm -hmm. more stress, which is holding me back. So once I became, like, internally, like, you know, numb, I realized, like, at this point, like, dude, if I want to get better, I just, I got to stop thinking about it. And just do what I can and let time do its thing. So I learned patience. And at that point, I learned a game plan. Like at this point, like when things are here, like what am I going to do 
when that gate opens mm -hmm. and that horse race starts, uh, starts. That's it. So I just kind of learned patience, had my game plan all thought out mm -hmm. when that moment came. And when it did, I just executed. You executed. I had, so, yeah, I had everything planned out. You know, here's this, one month of this. I'm just going to walk one month of testing some waters here. Then, like, I didn't start lifting for about four months into it. And then, you know, I want this goal, this goal. I just had month by month. Mm -hmm. And in three years, I went from. So you have goals. Yeah. You had goals. Yeah, I just, yeah, okay. I, yeah. So in three years, yeah, I went from a hospital bed to an Olympian. Well, that's the end of the show, then, because he ain't let me get Bill back up to it. <laughs> but no, but you, you know, it's true. So again, after the two thousand four hundred and seventy-eight days, you step back on stage on May eighth, uh, two thousand uh, two thousand one, and that was around the time uh, I think I might have known you for about a year and a half. Now you hadn't competed yet, but I saw you getting into that prep, and I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, damn, he he getting bigger. I thought you, was, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. You started to shred up and stuff, and so. I'm starting to see that. So then uh, it was your first pro show. You're only your third show ever. Yeah. Like, like this is for people who don't know bodybuilding. First pro show, third show ever. And you did the indie pro and you got fourth place. Yes. Now, do you realize the guys who got first, second, and third? You, you, you know their history, right? Yeah. Those guys weren't no slouches. No. You know what I mean? They were good. And, and, and I wrote some down. Um, competing in the 212 division. Uh, Tonio Burton, the Predator, yeah. that year he finished 10th in the Olympia. Uh, Nathan Epler, 5th in the Olympia that year. And then John Jewett was ninth in the Olympia. But prior to that, he had three Olympia uh, appearances. Yeah. And his best was a fourth place finish in 2019. So these guys have all done more shows to you to the date. Yep. And you got fourth place. You know what I mean? I, I mean, the competition was sturdy. Yeah. And you came out fourth place. What did that, how did that make you feel? So at the moment, I, I already um, know at the moment. Yeah. At, at the moment, I I was disappointed in myself. Sure. I thought I would do better, but like, I didn't know any of their histories. I didn't know them. I don't, I didn't uh, like research it. And so when we talked backstage, like I talked to, John Jewett and Nathan Epler. And like, you know, I think Epler said he did like 15 shows yeah. at that point. And John Jewett, I think it was on like his 18th or 19th yeah. show. And so they were like, dude, like now it was Tony O'Burton. That was and, his first pro show. And Nathan's pro debuts as well. Uh -huh. So okay. three of the top four were pro debuts. Mm -hmm. And then John Jewett was, was, a, was a, a seasoned vet. Yeah, he's a vet. Yeah, he, he's looking insane right now. Yeah. But that, so like at the time, I didn't, so like, like Nathan was like, dude, I this is my 15th show. This is your third show. Yes, right. it's our debut. But he's like, dude, when you hit 15 shows, imagine the stage presence you have, the, the confidence, the look. He's like, so, yes, he's like, dude, don't be discouraged that you took fourth. I know he could see it, but that was his thing. He's like, dude, he's like, you took fourth with now top Olympians mm -hmm. like, that year I found. So, like, I lost to great people. But right. also, like, dude, like, yeah, put things in perspective. This is your third show, and this is my 15th show. That so is, That is – Crazy. So bro. looking back, yeah, dude, it's 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 wild. Like so, that fourth place was a very dude, probably one of the best you know placings that means most to me because mm -hmm. like you know I was among great bodybuilders, among greatness, and my first show after all of that you know darkened time. Exactly. So that was probably the single, honestly, yeah, the single most important moment to my life. Yeah. To bounce back from all of those things that you just explained and described to all the audience, to bounce back from that, bro. Yeah, that's 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 wild. Okay, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say crazy because you know, again, you know, we can compare our lives and stuff. And yeah, I've torn ACL. I've had a labrum surgery. I broke my hip. Once I broke my hip, you know, it was the Bo Jackson. Said right. you never play football again. I'm like, who? Who, who are you? Are you God? Nah, nah, I'm going to play again. You yep. know what I mean? So for you to overcome that and hear you say these things, that's why I'm kind of like twitching and stuff. And <laughs> I'm getting chills, you know, because I don't know all of this. This is why I have you here now. Yeah. You know, I hear a little bits and pieces. But I didn't know all of that. You know, that's amazing, bro. It is. You know what I mean? And so um, after all of that time to finish fourth and then 
next year, a year later, you go back to the Indy Pro where you finish fourth. Yep. Um, now, this is your second pro show ever, meaning show number four. Yeah. And you go back and win that shit. Took that trophy with vengeance. With vengeance. So, so tell me tell me more about the vengeance. I, like, I want to hear it. Ooh. <laughs> so everything kind of uh, lined up perfectly. Like, I knew um, at this moment, like, my coach was like, the goal is to gain about 10 pounds of stage weight, and we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 21, we were 197 on stage, and uh, the 22, we weighed in at 207. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we gained exactly 10 pounds, but the way it's set up, everything started going the right direction. Um, I got a, a massage therapist sponsorship about nine weeks out, mm-hmm. which um, all you out there – uh, who are in any type of sports, guys, massage therapy is very important to just staying healthy and keeping your body moving great. So don't slack on that. I did because I just had so much going on. But once Zach, the owner of a Tachi Therapy, he came, he's like, hey, man, he's like, we are great friends. He's like, I want to sponsor you. I want to help you get ready for the show. That really helped my body yeah. stay moving efficiently and staying injury free and pain free during that prep. Mm-hmm. So that was the start of like everything kind of going in the right direction. And then I just wasn't as stressed mm-hmm. that thing. I just kind of focused on myself. I lived right next to the gym. Mm-hmm. So cardio, literally just like a two minute drive, the gym, a two minute drive, everything was just kind of right there. And then leading up to it, it just really just was one of the easiest preps because I stayed leaner that off season now, going from the Indy like 21, we went from 140 to 230, but it was a little sloppy. But, hey, like, I'm trying to get all that all that muscle sure. memory back. But after that first show and staying leaner, not cheating so much, trying to mature that muscle, the prep went smooth. Yeah. And so at this moment, that's when the confidence changed. Like, I didn't really post on social media, but this one I tried to post, I remember, like, every single day. I, I make one post every day. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, all these things I've watched, like, if you want to build your social media content, just post every day. Just do it. Right, so, right. from that moment on, I don't like pictures. I don't like attention. I'm not really, like, so it kind of makes me nervous. I get a bunch of anxiety. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, all right, like, I'm, I'm just going to do this. Mm-hmm. So, I just did it. Started getting a lot of following, more than I've ever seen, and just... Posting myself, I was like, you know what, like, because most time I'm like, I don't want to post. I don't want to show what I got. I want to just show up. I want to ghost it. For sure. Show up. And then I'm like, you know what, like, no, like, I know I'm expected to win the show. Right. So what do I have to hide? Yeah. Just throw it out there and I'm going to show up and I'm going to be the best, you know, the best I'm going to be. And I believe in myself that no one's going to take me down. That's one of my things is uh, like I'll post, but I really. I don't really want to show too much. So yeah. you're saying that, hey, man, just you got to show it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm the same way. And you can ask Mark Knight this. Like, my first indie pro, like, which uh, Dave Bowers, the uh, the promoter of the indie pro. Right. He made a joke when I showed up at the athletes meeting in 22. He was like, you know, hey, guys, because, like, you know, I'm a ghost. He's like, he's like, you all need to post about this show. He's like, Brian, you know, we need you to get up there and promote. He's like, I know you don't like Anyone knowing who you are. Right. Yeah, but I was like, he just called me out. But yeah, I, w- I was like that. But promote yourself. After the, uh, after like the 21 going into the 22 prep when that started at 12 weeks out, I was like, you know what? No, like I, I need to just post. I, once again, like uh, social media is kind of a scare. It's an anxiety thing. Like I don't like posting because you're always worried about what people are going to think of you. But that moment, I'm like, you know what? Like you don't get through life running from your fear. Mm-mm. You get through life facing it head on. Yeah, so geez. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to post. I don't care what people say or what people do. And it really helped get rid of a lot of internal anxiety. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And then, I mean, then um, Jeff Saigo, um, rest in peace. I love that man. He was my photographer. Um, he reached out to me. I was like, dude, I want to document all of this. He believed in me. So that was it. So Zach, I had the massage therapy. I had a professional photographer that followed me around. Um, got the, Got videos from like six weeks, three weeks, two weeks out, yeah. came to the show, two yeah. day out. So everything was just lining up. All the stars were lining. And then when that show happened, it did. Um, I won. And let's, it wasn't let's, close. Let's take a look at your individual um, routine of that show. Cece, if you can pull that up for us, we, will, we might have the uh, individual routine. And... Um, 
Looking how crazy my man looked. Came out looking like a house. <laughs> Indie Pro 2022, where Brian Bozzano took first place. And just kind of talk us through it as you look at it. So my boy, uh, Daryl Mayo, he's actually, uh, his uncle is uh, John Meadows. So he helped me get this whole routine. I love you, Daryl. All the time that you spent helped me with this. Um, I'm not very good. I'm not very flexible, I'd say. And uh, just like with movement and like dancing. And Daryl's very good with presentation. And he taught me all this stuff. We worked on it multiple times a week for like the whole 10 weeks leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty much him. He was the mindset behind it all. I didn't come up with any of it. Right. So I just followed orders from what he had me do. And I just went up there and executed it. And uh, I'm a, a little nervous because you can see I'm just kind of moving pretty quick. Yeah. But yeah, that was pretty much it. I just, you know, should have did it slower. But Daryl was the one behind it. And that helped me get that going because I'm not very good at like dancing and being fluid. I'm yeah. more or less like a brick. Right, right. Sorry, like, uh, <laughs> so and I so, can't scratch my back. Where, that's <laughs> when you go to uh, comparisons will set you apart. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it looks smooth. Obviously, I don't, I don't, I didn't know much at the time, knowing what I know now, and you pointing it out like, yeah, you were moving fast, but at the same time, bro, still look phenomenal. You yeah. know what I mean? And, 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 and I don't want people to misunderstand this. There was some steep competition there, too. Yeah, there, there was there, some. There was deep. a guy who was already a two time Olympian named uh, Noel Adame. I believe yeah. his name is. Is French? Is that French? Uh, I think it might be, yeah. Might be French, Adame. But anyways, uh, and he was a two-time Olympian before that show. And yep. you went out there and you said, hey, nah, bro, it's my time. It's, and, it's my time. And not to cut you off, but he placed fifth at the Indy Pro 21. Mm. So I was one spot ahead of him then. So it, then, it was a rematch. Ooh. It was like, all right. He was looking back. When we went there at the at the meeting, we already knew it was going to be us two, mm -hmm. top two. Like, yeah. we just knew it. And so, yeah, that was, uh, I was like, you know what? I beat you last year. Yeah, I'm gonna do it I've again. been working hard. Mm -hmm. I will beat you again this year. I love that. I love that confidence. And so, you know, that was winning that show made you a first time Olympia qualifier. Yep. And December of 22, you went to the Olympia. How was that experience? Amazing, man. The yeah. fifth show of my life. Fifth show. Bro. I'm at the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Come on, man. And uh, it was honestly the most. Now, the event itself was the most stressful. Like, my coach warned me about that. He's like, dude, with all the stuff, he's like, it's going to be a nightmare. Right. But going to that show, it was honestly, like, the least stressful show I've ever gotten ready for. Because it's like, this is it. This is top dog. Like, That's it. So I, there was more stress for me to win, uh, like, the pro show. Like, I wanted to win. I wanted mm -hmm. all the other things. So, like, going to Olympia, I was just like, all right, like, this is the end of the road. I'm like, what's it to worry about? I'm going up against the best of the best. I'm with these guys. The people I looked up to are now my direct competition. And then the podcasts that were going on leading up to it, a lot of people had me potentially winning the show and being top three, top five. So it's like, hey, man, like I'm just I'm just doing my thing. But like what was at this point, what was there to be worried about when this is the end of the road? This is it. There was more nerves early on, which doesn't make sense because this, mm -hmm. this, this is it. But in my mind, I'm like, this is where I was meant to be. Yeah. And so that whole process leading up to it, now the traveling, being in Vegas in December, I did not know Vegas could be 20 degrees. Oh, it was so, cold out there? Oh, dude, it was freezing. Oh. Absolutely. Dude, it was uh, yeah, December 16th, 2022. So it was, mm -hmm. dude, it's freezing in Vegas. I was like, wow. I thought it'd be warm, but no. Right. It, so all that, that was just going from place to place. And Vegas itself is just, the strip is chaos. So, like, you know, the venues over here for prejudging, the venues over here for finals, Tandy's oh, wow. here. So traveling, it it's not ideal for athletes. So different venues, not even yeah, the same spot. You know, it's, yeah, it's it's oh. it's honestly a, a shit show. Like, Everybody trying yeah, to get money. Dude, it's, like my coach warned me, he's like, dude, it's it's not designed to make it easy mm -hmm. on your like so like with the Olympia being in Orlando sometimes since COVID. That people love that because it's one big venue. There's no, it's just like a big convention center. It's not on a strip. Parking's there. Yeah. There's no like whereas like Vegas, yeah, you're just, you're stuck on a strip. I gotta go here. I, I gotta walk ten miles when you're not supposed to be walking on your legs. 
for mm. inflammation. So like, yeah, it just, so a lot of things are happening. So I'm going from place to place. And so like, it wasn't my overall best look on stage leading up to the show. The pictures I posted physique was amazing. I probably one of the best packages that we brought, but somewhere between arriving and just going from place to place, the extreme coldness, all these things, it just, uh, I ended up retaining some water, you mm -hmm. know, which, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, foresee that. Right. So, yeah. So to me, the Olympia was probably why my worst showing because of just what happened, just stressors and just being in the cold, having to go here, go, go to nine places at once and try to keep your food around. So it was, it was very stressful, but leading up to that moment, it was the easiest prep. Mm -hmm. I've ever done. Your mind was already there. Yeah. You know what you needed to do. You've been through it four times at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a lot, yeah. right? Four times at this point, but you know what to expect. And you have, um, you know, new confidence, you know, beating a two-time Olympian already. Yeah. Uh, I know how, yeah, definitely on top of the world. But I still thought your Olympian look was wild. Okay. Yeah. We know who took first, Sean. I looked at the second place dude. I was I was like I was not impressed. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Here, like he was wide, and he had a chest, but nothing here. If you if you ask me, I I I don't know, yeah. Se like the second place his name is Angel. Um Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I that's one thing I I I I don't see how that happened. Politics. The overall, yeah, I how mean how political I, is it? I don't I've never been there. You think it's very political? Honestly, yes, I do. Okay. I, um, I don't think it's what it should be. I mm -hmm. do think there is politics behind it because, I mean, as you, you know, seen, uh, I'm not going to throw names out, but a lot of people around me, nah, other throw gyms, them out. you know, like my girlfriend, my coach, everyone is like, there's, his body is not appealing. Angel. And yeah. And no, Angel's it's not. physique is wider, Angel's waist is wider than his legs. Kind of so it's like I just don't see the shape. Like I, I don't understand how he could be second. Like he even beat Keon, who is the current two twelve champ. Yeah, Keon destroys, like murders his week. So like, and then he he took second to um, Kamal, who yeah. was a previous champ, mm -hmm. and his shape is better. He's got he's leaner there. So I, I just like once again, I don't think his physique. You now he's got mass. That's it. He has that massive chest, but like everything else. I don't see him in top 10 and most people around me here to talk all, all the same thing. So, I mean, I don't know what else. Like I'm here in the flesh and I, I done my research and I was looking at these guys. Okay. I can say there were probably four guys. That, you could have been top five. Yes. You, you could have been top three, especially with angel being two. And I'm not knocking you angel. I don't know you, but I do. My eyes are not going to deceive me. I don't know everything about the sport, but my eyes are not deceiving me. You have a great career. That's great. But you did not look better than Phenom. I'm just I'm just being honest. So anyways, back to what I was saying. You could have finished top three in my in my eyes. Yeah. And that's why I'm asking, is it a political thing? And go ahead. Yeah. So I I mean, I do feel that. Like, you know, I could guarantee top five. I still think I could potentially pull out that third, but top five there. But like I do feel like because everyone's like, you know, you get your first right, year, right, right. you, you gotta put your time in. All these things, like I, I just like, yeah. So it's in the end, like, because uh, my feedback on at the Olympia was, I uh, my tan was off. Mm. They're, they're, they're like your your tan was off, and you just need more dense muscle. Okay. And I asked other people that were well connected in history, and they were like, you know, just that's their way of saying, um, Not you yet. you got to put your time. Yeah, because I'm like, what's my tan? Like, like everyone's like, I don't think your tan was that bad. But I'm like, how was I? You know, I'm getting docked for a tan. I'm like, how's my physique and all this stuff? So, and then I need like denser muscle. And um, I was talking to someone backstage who's well connected. And he's like, honestly, you're probably one of the thickest guys in 212 right now. Yes, you're newer, but he's like, dude, you're one of the biggest. You, yeah, you're thick. That's you. Yeah, that's so the like, biggest, not thick. So I, talk to men. I need more Pause. mature muscle. Like, I, I, I think so that was a way, like, once again, I'm not shitting on anyone above me. Like, I should definitely be in top five, potentially top three. But, like, you know, I did not deserve the win that day. Okay. I was not the best. Sean, I mm -hmm. Sean was mm -hmm. in incredible. Yeah. Definitely deserved the win that show. Year in and year out. Hands down. Right. So, but he's also been there how many times? Yeah. This is your fifth show. Yeah, his very first Olympia, he, he took that last. And it took him 
I think 16 years to finally, I think it was like 15 or 16 years to finally win the Olympia, but it took him five or five Olympias, I think to win. But his very first Olympia, he was dead last. Everyone's like, dude, your first Olympia, your ninth, his, he was dead last, and now he's the champ. And that's the thing, though, what people don't understand. They probably look at it, like, oh, he finished ninth. They'll probably look at this and be like, oh, he finished ninth. I don't think you guys understand how many people in the world competes at the 212 division. Like, it's not just 50 people out there competing around the world. What would you say, how many? <laughs> thousands uh, yeah thousands potentially maybe a hundred thousand pros yeah hundred thousand pros competing and this man finished number nine in the world come on like how many people can say that they finished number nine in the world coming yeah. to that on august 27th 2023 you made it public to the world that you were retiring from bodybuilding yeah. why is that at the pinnacle. At the, it uh, is, you know, ninth place. But, dude, five shows. You know, a few more shows or whatever, a few more years, bro. That yeah. shit is yours. Yeah, so it kind of like, so what came to that was behind scenes, that was going to be my final year no matter what. I just didn't want to continue um, anymore just from being completely transparent. Um, the things we got to do mm -hmm. behind to be at that level. You said um, you said transplant transparent parents, so just be transparent. So yeah, so the anabolic steroids, okay. the supplements that we gotta take, um, they're not, once again, used under control and with supervision from your medical doctor, you're fine. But like at that level, you're you're risking l l like later things in life. Okay. And so I had to come to a conclusion of like, you know, I wanna keep doing this, but like at what cost? Like there is politics and a lot of people say like, you know, like you could win, but like a lot of people don't win because of the politics right. because you didn't, because like I, I haven't shaken any hands with anyone, anyone there. I don't go around like visiting the, the judges gyms and yeah, nah. doing all that stuff. I, I just do stuff. Nah. So sort of like, you know, you could potentially win, but also at this moment, like these things aren't ultimately like who really wins. It's just what you do for people. So it's like, are you willing to risk, your health, maybe you know, like your potential, like your life, if you go too hard, too long with like, you know, the last couple of years, Bibles were dropping left and yeah, right. Yeah, they were. At substantially higher numbers than ever in history. Yeah. So it was more in lines of just kind of like, I want to do this, but like, I don't want to just randomly die one day. And like, people are saying like, you know, like, yes, you get blood work done to all these things, but like, there was someone on Instagram that like, you know, they did like blood work every three months. Everything was great. They got echoes calcium scores and like he ended up having a heart attack one day like so he did everything he was meant to and nothing ever showed right. that he was going to have one but mm. he, it did so he's like so no matter how much you do you don't know when that moment's coming right. but you're playing with fire and so in my mind overall like my organs you know i like my hair my youth like you know i still i don't want to look dried up yeah. age in the face i don't want to go bald i don't want to have liver failure kidney failure damaged heart yeah. So after Olympia, I got everything checked. You know, I always got my blood work done, but I never got any like exams done. So I got an echogram and a calcium score, which is the I'm not sure if you guys out there know. So your calcium score uh, shows you the blockages in all uh, in your veins and your arteries. So it should be straight zeros. I, I got it back. It was all zeros. And then I got my echogram done. And the doctor looked at me and said, I would have never known that you took a steroid in your life. He's like, you're he's like the phenom. So it was like, all right, like I was expecting something because uh, my brother actually had an enlarged heart. He never took steroids. He didn't really do anything about lifting and all that stuff, but like he just had an enlarged heart. So I'm like, all right, there might be something genetically that I'm over here not just, you know, ignoring because I wanted to keep going. I had a right. dream. And so like after I got that done, he's like, yeah, he's like the size of your heart, the the size of the walls of your heart, your ejection fraction, all that stuff. He's like, dude, it's flawless. He's like, you just, you have a, Perfectly normal heart. So I'm like, all right, so I have a chance to step away. You know, I still want kids, still want to have a family, still want to do all that. So like, I'm still young enough to live the rest of my life mm -hmm. and do more things with my life than just one thing. Right. And so that's where like, and like, I came to the conclusion of like, this is gonna be my last year, win or lose or, or whatever happens, this is it. I'm gonna go all in and then I'm gonna start the next chapter of my life. I have my youth, 
have my health, my looks, all mm-hmm. that. Like, I'm just, I have a chance to walk away from this completely unscathed. Right. And so, and then I started having extreme elbow pain where I could barely move my arm. And I just sat there and I was like, you know, I'm a man of my word. I made a promise like this would be the final year. And so I could not finish it. I just, the uh, tennis elbow was getting so bad. Mm-hmm. And so I just was like, you know, I, I, I have to call it. Yeah. And so, and that was what led to it. Like, I still wanted to go more, but like, once again, like chase your dreams, but you know, what's built in the sport, like, you know, you're, you have a trade-off. You don't know when that door is coming, but I'm playing with fire and I didn't want to just get caught in that, you know, trap of like never ending, Mm -hmm. never moving on. Because once again, it's not easy to move on when you've lived your life one way. So, and and it hasn't been easy, but like the later I would wait, like I made my dream come true. I had all these things. I have my health. I'm like, I could go more and be a little more greedy. I still believe myself at the same time. I'm like, you know, I just, I do want to potentially have a child. I do want to start traveling and see the world. Like, you know, do more. I'm still young. Yeah. But if I continue into the forties and all stuff, like, you know, I might lose all my hair, might age myself, might hurt my um, organs, my abdomen might get too distant. Like, you know, just like, mm-hmm. I don't want to win something and then look back and have this disgusting looking physique. Also, if you hold on to the weight for too long, the skin doesn't stretch back mm-hmm. the, like the elasticity. So being, so that's where like, if I lose some of the weight now, my skin, like we're now, it's, it's still tight. But if you hold on to the mask to like your 40, like 45 and try to lose weight, it's not going to come back. You're just going to have a bunch of saggy skin, mm-hmm. a disgusting look. And then like, I want to be confident in every phase of my life. Absolutely. And so I looked in with hindsight, like, you know, I just, I need to stop this now. From I heard from a little birdie that you weren't even on anything super, super crazy because no. you were such a genetic freak that you weren't on like anything crazy. Is that true? Yeah. So my coach has been like, if he's like, you know, if people knew what you took to get ready for your shows, not a single person would believe it. Right. And he's like, you're nowhere near the amounts that people take to be at the Olympia. Mm-hmm. He's like, so if you would, who knows what I, I could have been but like, there's a trade off. So like, you know, first time I ever took steroids back when I was young, I, um, went through liver failure. Mm-hmm. So, and all I took was 500 milligrams of test, 400 milligrams of DECA and 75 milligrams of D ball a day. And I went through liver failure and my coach's like, yeah, the D balls will probably did it. He's like, that's, that, that, that's not overall a tremendous amount. Now I had friends who were doing the same thing, drinking, you know, at Kent state, like, and they were completely fine. And like, I don't drink, I don't do anything. I don't, I just right. kind of lived there. But like, I went through extreme liver failure. Like my liver enzymes were 750% above normal. My Billy Rubens, I think are supposed to be like, you know, like, like a maximum of like 0. 0.1, 0. 0.4. They were 7.6. So my doctor was like, you're, pretty much dead on paper. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know how you're living. How'd you now. fix it? Did you stop? So, yeah. So I went to see a GI specialist. She had me stop everything. She's mm-hmm. like, all right, no protein. Like, like protein is actually a toxin to your liver. Yep. It has to be broken down twice. So she's like, no protein. You want a high complex carbohydrate diet. So like lots of potatoes, pasta, lots of water, no vitamins, no pills, no anything. She's like, the liver can regenerate itself. Mm. So she's like, you know, don't, I was like, what about milk thistles? Like she like, like the milk thistles. She was like, no, it's like nothing. I just want water and carbohydrates. Your, your liver likes carbohydrates and drink nothing but water. Mm -hmm. And so after about four months, like your liver sheds its skin about every 90 days after about the fourth or fifth month, my, my, my enzymes are still going up. And so she put me on a liver transplant list. Oh, Shiza. And so at that point, it was like, she's like, this is not coming back. And then around the seventh month, the numbers started to dip. Mm-hmm. And then she was like, all right, let's wait. And then at the 10th month mark post being with her, it completely like normalized. Regenerated. And so, so she's was like, this during right. that hiatus? No, no, this, this was, was before, this was, before? yeah, wait, this is like uh, when I was 20. Uh, on time, okay. yeah. So this was young, young. This is okay. before I even knew a Bible. I, I just want to be big. Right, right. At this point. So when I did, I gained 30 pounds the first month. Damn. stuff. And so it, it was a good amount. But overall, so like turning pro um, at that point still, I was only using 500 milligrams of test. Never touched growth hormone. Never touched insulin. Never touched T3. I was just using 500 milligrams of test. Uh, 
400 milligrams of Equipose. Uh, uh, Clen changed on the day, but we used roughly about between 80 and 100 MCGs of Clen um, and just 50 milligrams of Winstrel a day. Mm -hmm. I don't know what any of that means, but... (laughs) And so, yeah. And then as of my pro debut, it was just 600 milligrams of test, 400 Equipose, the same Clen, the little bit of like Winnie. And this time, but we threw four units of growth a day. And that's it. And that's all I did for the show. Still never touched insulin. Still never touched T3, which are, you know, I that that's one thing I, I told my coach. I was like, I just, those are two drugs I am not willing to take. Yeah. I do not want it. I do not need it. And just there's too much with that. So, but now the vast majority of people, like, I mean, I had a friend using who was like half my size, like over a gram of test, more compounds at the same levels, mm-hmm. if not, you know, my level or higher but like, you know, it's just they're using a base of one gram of test and I'm using 600 milligrams of test. Right, right. And they're doing other stuff, insulin growth together, which is like, you know, an extreme combination. They still couldn't achieve this. And yeah, so it's like, so like my coach is like, dude, like if now like most Olympians using way more, like, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, some using more units of growth a day. I just couldn't, I can't afford it. Right. So I just stayed at four. Um, and that's it. And like other thing also, the levels is like, you know, the growth hormone could have been pushing like with even trend trend. Oh yeah. Trends. The one thing too, I use all my 300 milligrams of trend for every show and most people can push more. So 300 is like the base. That's kind of like what you do when you start out. Most people are doing like four or five. Now, some people that do harsh trend cycles will do about 700 milligrams of trend a week. to get that trend look. Mm-hmm. I've only done 300. So he's like, so you never ran a high trend cycle. You never pushed test. You never did more than four units of growth. You never took insulin. Never took T3 and insulin itself. He's like, with your genetics, if you took insulin, you would have been like Ronnie Coleman. He's like, with how um, receptive you are right. to compounds. Like, so I'm what they call a hyper responder and all stuff. And so during the time I went from this hospital bed to an Olympian, I was only on, we started at 400 milligrams of test, went to 500 for most of it, the prep, and then when started the prep, started 600 milligrams of test. I could use a lot more than that, but that's all I wanted to take. Mm-hmm. And so my coach, like, if people knew that you were only running 600 milligrams of test as a base for any prep, they're like, dude, they would have been like, this, this kid's not telling the truth. <laughs> but yeah, everyone thought I was a medicine cabinet because of the glutes, everything <laughs> else. So like, cabinet. oh, there's, there's no way to get that lean without yeah. just, yeah, that was like the medicine cabinet. He's like, mm, like but they don't, coach. but you know, you get a couple of videos here and there that you put on YouTube, but they don't see what I would see every day when I go into the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This dude sweats so much. You know what I mean? And then train. So <laughs> you, you spend, I think I remember talking to you, you think you, you spend what, two hours on each muscle group or whatever, or until you can't go anymore. Like yeah. your training is unorthodox too. Yeah. I'm like, yo, what? A whole, yeah, no, that's too many sets, but it works for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I found out my own equation, like right. my own algorithm. Yeah. And that's one thing about this, you know, any physique or anything in sport, like, there's not one thing that works for you. You mm-hmm. have to find it. No one is the same, the same blood, the same genetics, the same receptors, all this stuff. So like, just because like, you know, like you don't need to train heavy to gain muscle. You don't need to do a, a ton of reps, but like you got to find the combination that works for you. Like, like if you use my diet, it's not going to make you lean. It's not going to make you bigger. Mm-hmm. Like the foods that work with me may not work well with your blood right. type. So like, and that's the big thing is like, you don't know. There is no correct way to do this. You have to put the time in and figure out what works with you. Absolutely. Is it higher, right? Like higher weight, higher reps, higher sets. Like my thing was about 10 to 12, no more than 15, about 10 to 12 reps, but set after set after set. So I wasn't doing 30 rep sets. I wasn't doing high volume. And I wasn't strong. I didn't, you know, bench 400 pounds. I like bench, like bench pressing 225 versus 10 to 12, very slow and controlled, but do 10 sets. <laughs> Next, and so like I just did very high volume and set numbers. Mm. That was what worked with me. And many people tell you that's crazy or it's, you know, hey, like I overtrained and I could have potentially looked way better. But hey, like I made it to the Olympia from a hospital bed weighing 140 pounds to an, to an Olympian, 210 pounds, pure solid muscle in three years, which most people can't make that transformation in a lifetime. I made that in three years yeah. on minimal amounts of drugs compared to the competition that I'm in. Now, to a normal person, I'm, I'm, I'm on a good amount of drugs. Right. But compared to the pool that I'm in, mm-hmm. 
I'm nowhere near. Nowhere near that. Nowhere near what other people were taking. Still got it and still healthy. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's one of the things that, you know, being a pro, you know me, uh, I've turned pro naturally. Um, I'm like, man, I can't compete versus these guys, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you think about the Aaron Banks and the um, – what's the other guy that, that always go head-to-head -head with Banks? Is um, it – I can't remember. You're not name. talking about Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Brandon, Brandon um, Hendrickson. Hendrickson. And then the other guy was Ryan Terry, I think, one last yeah. year. I can't compete with them dudes, bro. Unless, you yeah. know what I mean, I, I jump on something, you know. and That's a big I, decision. I know. I know. And it's like, what do I really want? You know what I mean? I never got into this. This was never a dream. But, again, I'm not, I'm not the phenom. But I fear, hey, man, you know what? You got – Great, just, you know, so it's been a few years of me trying to grow. Yes, my chest got a little bigger. My back is getting wider. But it's like, what What if I, you know, decided to dabble a little bit? What could my body look like? Could I compete yeah. right away? Could I be, you know, in that uh, um, top 10 ratio? You know what I mean? In the Olympia, could I make it to the Olympia? You know, um, I think about it. Um, but, I, again, like you, I don't want to push things to where I like my locks. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to have kids. I don't know what it's going to do to, you know, to my heart. And so I ask questions and stuff. Um, there's, there's been some interest because, you know, I like to compete. Yeah. But at the same time, like you said, at what cost, you know? Yeah. And that's, you know, in most areas of life, you won't have to really make a decision like that. Yeah. But this is that special case where like, you know, like you got to push yourself and certain things require certain decisions, yeah. but like those decisions have consequences. Yep. And so that's where, like, looking at me, like, I could have kept going, but, like, this is not a sport where you can do it naturally. Mm -hmm. Like, now, one thing, like, many people, like, in bodybuilding don't really go pro without touching growth. Mm -hmm. But then in your case, like, one thing, like, you know, you don't need all that mass, that excessive amount of right. mass that we need. So potentially you don't really need to touch steroids or the harsh ones because you are you don't need any more tissue. You're, in your division, you're big. Now, you could get fuller and harder. Right. But the overall, the worst part about the sport is the building. The mass is the most dangerous, putting mm -hmm. on size. And like, statistically speaking, even the correlation of like football. So like size is what kills you. So if you look at the average uh, age life of like linemen, defensive linemen, quarterbacks, cornerbacks, like the linemen die first. They have very short, mm -hmm. you know, lifespans because it just, being seven, you, you, like you're not supposed to be seven foot tall. You're not supposed to be 400 pounds. Right. So mass is what kills you. And then like uh, the quarterbacks, the cornerbacks, the wide receivers, they live long mm -hmm. lives because mm -hmm. you're meant to be fit, low body fat, and just like, overall agile right. and mobile and only staying about like, you know, 180 pounds around mm -hmm. that time, depending on your height. But like, so size is what kills you. So that's the part of like, when you want the mass, just know that's, you, I'm not meant to be 230 pounds at five foot four. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of stress on the heart. So it's not really the steroids or like once again, if like people can use steroids for years, like Arnold, like wrote a book, he took steroids for 30 years. He's fine. So like, there's tons of people, like even all the old school Bibles, they use all the steroids that we did and they're all still perfectly like healthy. Right. Right. But as life goes on, things progress too far mm -hmm. and we don't know how to stop progressing. You want more and more and more and more and more. So in today's day and age, like it's not necessarily the steroids that are bad for you. What it's just your body's not meant to be in a three hour like workout or just going through what that for years of your life, mm -hmm. forcing food, trying to get bigger, all that stuff. So if you really don't chase the size, you can live till 90 years so, old. So, so, so Olympian Brian yeah. Bozzano, you, you've seen these guys. Okay. Do, do I need to get bigger or do I just need to come in condition? You know, I, I mean, think, I know I need some place I need to improve, you know. But. Yeah. You need a, well, based on Ryan Terry, mm -hmm. because now, like. He's like, shorter, yeah, though. He's sort of, like, he has, like, because he was not nearly the biggest on stage. Right. So, I would say you don't need the mass, but for your height and your shape, I mm -hmm. think your best overall look would be you need this size mm -hmm. on stage. So, a little bit more mass, but just hard. So I'd say about 10 pounds mm -hmm. because right now just do how you look right now is ideal. Just turn that into granite. Right. So, which is a probably about 10 pounds of muscle, pure, solid, dense, dry muscle. And do you think I can do that naturally? 
I you don't. can be you can be you can be transparent. So what would you think something like somebody like me? What would you what would you if you were a coach? What would you say? Hey, train. This is what you need. Uh, well, the base test. Um, if you at, at the bare minimum to get what you need because you have amazing genetics. I think that you are similar to me, mm-hmm. whereas you don't need oh, much. Shit. Don't don't get me going. <laughs> don't get me going. So if that was me, I'd say test, trend. And a little bit of equipose. Those three as your base. And then as needed, I throw in clen. Dust test. It's really good at fat burning. Mm-hmm. And then really, like, I don't think the rest is needed. I think if you just did the base of the test, trend, and uh the equipose, and then threw in clen as you needed it throughout the show, that was what you would need. Because the ultimate, like natural bodybuilding, it's it's hard because they say like Steroids are not healthy, but when you look at all the science that's coming out, natural body is, is almost not healthy for you at all. Right. Yeah. Destroys your hormones. Like your body's not meant. So it's like in your case, why you can't do it on your own is like you can get shredded as can be. Mm-hmm. But when you're natural and your hormones start to tank from being on low calories, yeah. low carb, low fats, fats are important. You can't really cut fats out when you are natural. But when you do that, your endocrine system is shut down. Your test plummets. Dang. And so you're playing with your own hormones terribly, Mm -hmm. but also you can't retain muscle. So you can get shredded, but like to be muscular, you need the chest, uh, the test and all that just to keep you stable. So your hormone system doesn't just shut down from you doing extreme dieting and overstressing your body. So Mm -hmm. that's like, if you were to diet right now and to be at, at, at an Olympian level, you'd wither away most of your muscle. I guess that's what you see. So the so steroids small. is there not really for just mass. It's just to hold what you have mm-hmm. and allow your body to not eat the muscle tissue itself and just only eat the fat mm. off your physique. That makes sense. Okay. So that's why you like people think, oh, like you need to be shredded. To get, uh, you need to take steroids to get shredded. That's wrong. Right. Steroids is just about mass. That is it. You can get just as lean naturally mm-hmm. as you can as an enhanced bodybuilder and you can look at other shows. Right. And like, you know, um, like, uh, Ben Hartman, all natural, amazing athlete. He was just as shredded as I am on steroids. The only difference is, is I have much more mass yeah. on my physique. Mm-hmm. So steroids allow you to lose fat and not eat muscle. It's still going to happen, yeah. but you retain like 90% of it. And yeah. there, whereas if you diet naturally, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of muscle, fat, everything, and that's not what you want. That's what happened. So that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. It's just tissue. You don't need steroids to lose fat, mm-hmm. but you need steroids to lose fat and, and not lose ass. muscle. Right. Man, that's a that's a lesson right there. I I mean, you know, you talk to people, but the way you just broke it down make a lot of sense because yeah. I went into my first show, like 198, from 230 to 198, and then I went from 250 to 196. And I'm like, bro, this is like my butt was sagging. You know what I mean? You talk yeah. about the skin. I'm just like, yo, I was shredded. But I'm like, man, it, I, this can't be it. I know I can look better. You know what yeah. I mean? I shouldn't be losing this much weight. I want to get on stage at 210 and see what that looked like. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you, would, you would look wild. <laughs> but that's the problem. And that's the, the hard truth is, and even here, like, you know, it's just like once you start, will not stop. Mm-hmm. It Like once you taste what lifting really is, and I try to explain this to people like a lot of people in the gym have walked up to me and they've been like, dude, like they're like, I'm actually like, you know, I love the fact that you're so honest right. because I've actually stared a lot of people away from competing because I just told them the honest truth. Like, you know, I do this and I'm here, but like, you know, I tell them like, you know, just if you have any insecurities about yourself or like all stuff like this is not for you, right. this is for a strong minded person. Like if you already like them or like this couple walked up to me once and they were like, hey, like we're both trying to compete. I was here like, no, no, men can handle most of the stuff. A lot of women can't. Mm. So like men don't really mind getting fat because they oh, I want big arms. I want a big yeah, chest. Yeah, yeah. I want big like to like, but like women don't like going backwards. So like when they get ready for the show, they're like, hey, like I'm I'm looking the best of my life ever. But then when that show ends and they got a reverse, it messes with their mind because I like, oh, I'm I'm back to where I was or I might be fatter or like so so like whereas a man's like I don't care. Like, dude, I'm getting 20 inch arms. Yeah. So, and I was like, so if you right now, like you don't got to answer it to me, but if you look in the mirror right now and you already see things that are wrong with you and you're harsh on yourself, I'm like, bodybuilding is going to exploit that to the highest level. So if you already can't control your own image yourself, 
this is not the road you want to step down. And they came back to me the next day and they're like, yeah, dude, like, like, thank you. Yeah. So like, you know, we are not going to step on stage <laughs> and they're like, you know, just um, what you said hit home. And like, you know, I do have my own insecurities and I have to work through those. But like, if you're a confident person do yeah, do it, test yourself. But if you inside have any doubts about yourself or like your image and you don't know how to handle that, then you're going to start a dark path. And then the, the steroids, once again, if, when you decide to take those, that's another question of like, once you actually understand what the weights feel like when you have test levels, like you will, it's never the same. Mm -hmm. Like the lifting, the like the pleasure, yeah. you get pleasure. Like the weights, like, dude, it is the best thing. Like when you get that pump, the raging, the feeling that you have from the first time you take steroids. Hold you on know now, you said the rage. Oh no, um, so 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 Roy Rage is real. No, no, no. You what, said Rage. It says like the, uh, I was like yeah, the pump, the. I just that what feeling. I said. Yeah, that just like feeling, that. Like yeah. when you're um like the straight pleasure. Like when you are lifting, mm -hmm. it's it's a high. Yeah. Like there's nothing there but like the endorphins going. The point like it's like yeah like when when that blood is flowing, it is just unbelievable. Yeah, one of the greatest feelings that you could ever have, and so and once you taste that. You're, that mm -hmm. gym will never be the same. You could never go back to lifting weights as a natural. Mm -hmm. So when you make that decision, you need to know that there is no going back. Now, okay. you got to contain that. You let that get out of hand. Mm -hmm. Like like when in today's society, oh, like, you know, I've seen kids in the gym that are 16, like 15, uh, like talking about tests. Like, well, I just got my test. I'm like, dude, guys, like, you're starting too young, and now they're doing like they're doing the same. They're like, oh, I'm starting a 500 milligrams of test. You're 16 years old taking 500 milligrams of test. Stop! Like yeah. you don't need that. You haven't hit puberty, and you're you're destroying your body. But like that's the problem is like you can't be that person to be like oh a little more, a little more. Like right. less is more. Yeah. It is way better to take lower amount of steroids for a longer period of time than blast and do shorter. Yeah. But then some people are like oh I'm gonna blast and just and just never come off. Asking for death. Asking for it. That's, but yeah. slow. This is a marathon. Take little amounts. It's healthy mm -hmm. when you're doing this extreme dieting, the extreme eating, all stuff. You need to keep your hormones in check. Mm -hmm. So I would never recommend natural bodybuilding, but I'm never going to throw it on to you. Like, if you want this, it's, hey, you, you need to be on a little bit amount of hormones just to keep yourself healthy right. when those extreme cases. But, yeah, it's uh, that's the problem. It's like people get on it too soon. And they're doing just way too much. And the problem in today's society is no one works hard anymore. No one knows how to actually lift weights. CC, you hear that, young man? <laughs> it's not It's not about you, but he just says something that people don't know how to work hard nowadays, whether it's bodybuilding in their careers or just a little side job. If somebody gives you an opportunity to make some money, but you got to put it into work, young people, do it. Build a work ethic. Learn how to you know, make some money, but you're going to have to put in work and nothing will be handed to you. But I'm sorry to take that from you, though. You I just know. made a great point. Yeah, it's that's, you know, I see it all the time. It's like so many kids, like, they think they're training hard, but they're not. They're not, man. There's no ethic. They're, they're like, oh, man, I just, you know, I came in, I bench press, I'm not bigger. And it's like, dude, like, I like, where's that mindset? Like, you have to do something that people aren't doing. Right. Like, if you, and it's like same thing with women. A lot of women and this is the hard truth. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get bulky arms. It's like if muscle was that easy, like they're yeah. like, I don't know how many women I've talked to in gym. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's just, I don't want to curl. Like they're growing a 10 pound dumbbell. They're like, well, <laughs> I don't want to get big arms. I'm like, if you think that 10 pound dumbbell is going to give you big arms, like then why isn't every, but because once again, men are designed right. to be lean and fit exactly. and pure muscle. Mm -hmm. Women are designed to be body fat. That's healthy. Like they're just there. So it's like, so if every man is not a Greek God, like, and it's not most mm -hmm. men. So it's like, so <laughs> if every man doesn't have like 20 inch arms and raging abs, then why is, you know, like, then why aren't you that? So it's like, right, it's, right, it's right. a true, it's like, it's like, Hey, like lifting weights is not going to make you big. Mm -hmm. Like it takes, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Oh, that's right. So it's like, yeah, if like most like men just are overweight, small, and how many people like do we see the, the vast majority of people in the gym that are there five, six days a week that look mm -hmm. the same year after year yep. after year yep. after year because it's not easy. It's not. And even with steroids, like steroids don't make muscle. You do. 
Steroids will make you fatter. It helps convert calories and it helps you. So it helps, you know, convert energy better. So if you don't work out and you just take steroids, you're going to get fat and it promotes healing. So like, yes, it allows you to heal faster, which then allows you to make more muscle at a faster rate. But if you don't have the genetics already, then it's going to do nothing for you. So that's one thing is like, you can't just take steroids and be like, you know, I'm going to be Phil Heath. No, first off, you have to be born to be Phil Heath. Secondly, you have to work out harder than ever you ever did previously from running steroids. And that's something that when you go into a gym and you see people who are on steroids, they're training harder than they ever have in their past. They're pushing their body past the limits. You have to be best friends with pain, with being very uncomfortable. Like you can't sit there like, oh, like I'm starting to burn. No, three more reps. Like, and then at that point, you got nine more sets. In my mind, now people are now on in today's world, like, oh, you can't do that many sets. But like once again, I trained. 30 sets, whatever you want to say, three hours for years. And I made 80 pounds of pure mass on my frame. So it can be done. Now, not everyone is out there, but don't tell me that I would rather overwork than underwork. Yeah. And maybe that's why I have a lot of like pain and joint issues and like just tendonitis. I worked out too hard. But once again, I'd rather be the person to fail because I did too much than too little. Brian Barsano, I'm taking that. You got to become best friends with pain that's it you cannot just yeah it's i mean you just can't if you don't feel any uncomfortableness any pain if you're not sitting there then you're not doing enough <sighs> there's nothing in being comfortable everything that you dream of is going to require a moment where you're like man is this worth it yeah yeah i'm answering that the question, yes, it's worth it. And hell yeah, because I agree with you. You're absolutely right. So hell yeah, it's worth it. And I know I'm going to go through something. And I'm willing yeah. to go through it. And for all you young people, nothing is entitled. Sacrifice. So that's the key word that you all need to, you know, pay attention to is you have to be willing to sacrifice things in life to get what you want. To take a step back, you know, the party in life, whatever it is. Like, I mean, just as important in like in general, like, you know, just if you want to be normal, then expect normal things. If you want to be the person who's outcast because like you're not going to the parties, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're not doing all the cool things that you were supposed to do as a kid. Well, well like, like once again, if you want to be Michael Jordan, you want to be LeBron James, you want to be Tiger Woods. Do you think they were doing the normal things that everyone else is doing? No. They're not normal because they are at the top. Right. So if you want to be normal, then Follow in everyone else's footsteps. But if you want to, if people around you aren't saying that you're crazy, then you're not doing things hard enough. Like when I was getting into bodybuilding, like I, there are other pro bodybuilders that came up to me and when, I, when they were like, Hey, like you've been in for three hours. They're like I've never heard anyone doing that. Well, you never heard anyone going pro in 78 days. Ah. I'm not going to throw his name out there. <laughs> There's a pro here in Columbus. That oh, I'm, fuck. For, forget it. No, nah, well, no, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna put you. We don't really get along, but yeah, I he's. Would, uh, I would do it, but you ain't got to do it. He walked up to me. He disrespected me hard to my face when I came back after all that time, and I was training. We all used to train at Metro Fitness in Worthington. He walked up to me one day after all those like surgeries, and I was starting my comeback, and he was just kind of like, "Don't you start working out at five o'clock?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "It's it's eight. I'm like, "Yeah, I know." He's like. I, I already know who you're talking about. Now, yeah. I ain't going to drop no names unless you're okay with it because I call people out. This is the backfield. Yeah. And if you going <laughs> to, listen, I'm safe back here. Now, if you see them in the street, I might run. I mean, Sorry. Yeah, I no, mean, I get it. We ain't got to go into that. I know yeah. who you're talking about. So, yeah, he, uh, he got came a up rep. to me. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, online, people love him. Yeah. But behind the scenes, not too many people yeah. actually like him as a person. He is not a good person at all. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, he just came up to me. He's like, you know, no one does that. And I was like, yeah, but like, how many people went pro in seventy eight days? Right, and this is just when um, Ahmad Ashkani won his pro card at the Arnold Classic, and he was like, "Well, if you're training for three hours, you better start eating." And I was just like, "What?" And then so I walked away. Then that was on a Thursday night. Saturday morning, he sends me a text after Ahmad just won his pro card, and he's like, "This is your competition." He's like, "You better start training harder." If you think you can beat this, I'm, what this is he trying is, to do? Motivate you? I, I don't know. I'm like, it's eight in the morning. And you're saying like, I'm like all the stuff. And he's like, he's like, well, you know, I just never seen a pro bodybuilder train for three hours. For like, who does that? Yeah. I'm like, once again, like who went pro in 78 days, bro? Like, don't tell me that 
You know everything. What was his Olympia finish? Well, he didn't finish. Okay. All right. He went to Olympia twice, maybe. Yeah, I, I think two times in each time. If I had to guess, like maybe like 40th, there was 60 people there and he was, I don't know, fifth, sixth call out. But yeah. he's online talking about how he'll be top five, top five, top yeah. five, like how he can beat Seabum. I'm like, bro, yeah. you you haven't even f- like finished in the top 30. It, and I got no bad blood with him. Never had a situation with the guy. Um, respect to him. You know, he's been somewhere I've never been. Uh, but at the same time, everybody's different, man. Everybody's yeah. different. So he just, told me I could not do anything. He told me I wasn't a real pro. So what type of person does that? You know, what type I of, don't. Yeah. An insecure person does that. Somebody who feels threatened by the person that's in front of them is going to belittle them and try to tell them they, they can't do something that they've never done. Yeah, that's the type that's of person. So if somebody come up to me and they say, oh, this and this, I ah, cool. I know what it is. I'm a threat. Yeah. Or I'm not a threat. I can do something that you can't yeah. and you don't like it. And let's keep in mind, like, what it took him, like, 20 shows to ever turn pro. And he turned pro in a master's show. And his girlfriend at the time, well, his wife now, like, said the same thing. Like, they didn't do masters earlier because they thought, you know, hey, like, you should win an open show. And right. he, he just couldn't win an open mm-hmm. um non-master show so he won his pro card at masters and yeah, i said he made it to olympia now hey so congrats like you're a real pro mm-hmm. but you didn't win your pro card the true way like i mean i hate to say it but like you know masters is masters if you need to win your pro card with people in their 40s right once again like bodybuilding is not about age it's about a look mm-hmm. if you believe in yourself then why are you taking the easy way to cut out and go there so like i don't have any respect for him as a person and the people who actually know him same thing. They don't respect him. He's always just, he's a big facade. Everything about him and himself, he's a lie. He lies to people. He's a fake person. Mm. All stuff. So it, I kind of like looking at him having some success. Like, you know, I don't believe he's a real Olympian, but whatever. He went to classic. He failed at bodybuilding tremendously because he couldn't put on the size. He doesn't have the work ethic. Like, I know how many people say, like, when you see him work out, he's he doesn't work out. Right. He has great genetics, right, right. which is why he's at. But like he, he, he doesn't really put the effort in. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he came up to me in my face in the middle of the gym, was just telling me like, you know, I'm doing everything wrong, and I'm like, first off, like I'm a pro, you're not. And then this person at the same time got yelled at because he put IFBB bodybuilder in his profile, and he wasn't one, and he wasn't one at the time. And I remember like this was stirred up all. The talk in in the city, everyone's just going around like, I, "Can you believe this?" And then, um, Mike Davies' wife, um, Julie Palmer, mm-hmm. walked up to him, middle gym, and was like, "Dude, just like, dude, I mean, reamed him out, man." It was like, "Take that out of your profile right now." You didn't earn, like, it. you did not earn that. And when you do, you can put it in there. But like, it was just kind of like, "Well, it 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 doesn't say IFBB Pro. It just says IFBB Bible because I compete in the IFBB." No, you don't. No, you don't. It's like you're just, and I'm doing like so. Like he's just that kind of person, but Ooh. yeah. He looked at me in the face and said that I would never be great. And I mean, I went to Olympia once. I placed top ten in the world. Um, and you've been doing this for twenty years, and it you went been Olympia twice, and you're placing fourth, fifth call out on like fortieth out of sixty. And then every time you go on, you sit there and go back and say. You know, hey, you know, I I can be top five. I can be this. How about you stop talking and actually just let your body speak for itself? Because clearly you're not doing something right. Because you keep saying that you're going to be next to in that first call out. That first call out is light years away from what you have. First off, I mean, I'm not I'm being realistic here, not trying to put someone down. But the energy that you show out from the people in the city that know you don't like you. But also you're 40 something years old. Like first call outs, 20s, five, like 20 to 25. C bomb's a little older, but like in the 30s, like you can't really, you're 45, I think he is, and you don't have much room to make improvements. Yeah. You can't really get leaner. It's like harder to, to get there. You can't put on tissue. So it's like, so what are you going to do differently besides, oh, that's right, you just keep changing your words. But people do things to stay relevant, man. And sometimes it's talking and, and kind of shaking the tree a little bit to piss people off. And that's yeah. how they stay relevant. The hard truth is, you know, hey, you said I'd never be great, but I'm waiting for you to catch me. Let's go. I mean, if you want me to step down to classic, I'll do that. Hold on. Hold on. Time out now. Hold on. <laughs> I'll lose some weight. I thought you were retired. Are you, <laughs> would you come back for that? I'll, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> 
I'll lose. Well, I'm sitting at about 207 pounds. Yeah. I think my cutoff is like maybe 190. I have to lose about 20 pounds. And you would go out there and It'd kill it. It'd be hard. You, yeah. You would destroy like, that look, huh? I'll come down to your level and spank that ass. Hey, hey, listen. I, I, sw- <laughs> I swear I know we can do this podcast for hours, bro, because there's so much you and I can talk about. But I know, listen, we got to cut this because it's starting to get a little, <laughs> little heated. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm let sorry. me give me a work. No, no, heated is good. This is the backfield. Yeah, yeah. When we start seeing blitzes, we, we don't run from it. Yeah. We go right at the blitz or we counter it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's the same thing in life. When life gets hard, we don't want to run from it. You said it. People are going to come at you. It. People are going to come at you. And you can't back off because then they're going to continue to come at you. You got to yeah. go at this. You know what I mean? You got to go right at it. So, <laughs> I, listen, I, I love it. My man. Brian Balzano. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your stories, bro. I don't think this is the last time you're going to be sitting in this chair, bro. We're going to do this again. This is too natural for us. Yeah, it's going to be another one, whether it's talking about more body, because there's still so many more questions that I have. I done threw my note cards because I got so hyped, but there's so many questions I need. I still need to talk to you about and and ask you about. There will be a part two, but we're going to cut this for now because I know we got to get our days going and the time is just slowly uh, fading away from us, but Quickly, this interview had went by quick. So um, I do appreciate your time, man. Um, Brian Balzano, everybody. And listen, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you on IG and everything. Yeah, so I just have Instagram. Uh, it's at Brian Balzano, B-R-Y-A-N-B-A-L-Z-A-N-O. That's it. That's the only form of social media I got. And if you guys have any questions, you know, send me a message. I'll get back to you. Please sure to follow me. Um, not competing anymore, but hey, I still stay in shape. And I still make lifting my life so I can help anyone out there who is on their way to having any type of fitness achievement goal. Anybody you want to shout out? I want to give a shout out to our boy, Mark Knight. Mark Knight. Now, dude, I I love him. Um, He's been a big following for me forever. I want to give a uh, shout out to my sponsors. Morphogen Nutrition um, helps me feel my physique and helps me keep everything I can post anabolic steroids, you know, because you, you just can't keep everything that you did because nothing will touch those. But I thank you. Uh, I want to thank you guys for still believing in me and still want, still wanting to work with me post retirement. I want to give a shout out to Jed North, who's my clothing sponsor that I'm wearing right now. Nice. I love their clothes, guys. So check any of them out. If you go to Morphogen, use code Balzano ten B A L Z A N O ten, and for Jed North, Balzano fifteen. And also, I want to give a shout out to Just Meats. They just sponsored me, so I have a food sponsor. They make all of your meats shipped to your house, frozen. It is all grass-fed, coming from the uh, farms on the West Coast. It is grass-fed, grass-finished, no artificial dyes, none of that sort. So give them all uh, a try out, and uh, that's it, guys. Uh, that's it, man. Hey, listen, on me real quick. Listen, I ain't got no sponsorships. Um, my man got them all. But listen, everybody he just named, I'm, I'm open for sponsorships too, and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Because of the person that I am, I'm a hard worker. I can, I got, I got character. I'm just kidding. If y'all want to sponsor me, y'all know where to find me. But that being said, big screen looking right here. We love all of y'all. We, we always like to do. Since the captain ain't here, he usually break us down. But I got a little quarterback in me, so it's gonna be a cadence. I'm gonna get us out of here, okay? Wide eighty, wide eighty, wide right, seventy.